Welcome to Sword of the Spirit, written and presented by Colin Dye, Senior Minister of Kensington Temple and leader of London City Church. Sword of the Spirit is a dynamic teaching series equipping the believers of today to build the disciples of tomorrow. We pray that you find these programs inspiring and a catalyst in deepening your knowledge of God, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hello and welcome to the Sword of the Spirit, a school of ministry in the Word and the Spirit. We've been looking at the topic of listening to God and at this point in the teaching, I'm encouraging you to learn to listen to God and to pass His words on to other people. Now, how can you prepare to do that? Of course, the best thing to do is to be thoroughly immersed in Scripture. I mean, to know your Bible, to read it every day. When you read the Scriptures, you're in touch with the character of God, with the Word of God and the revelation of God. And you can begin to share that with other people. So I would encourage you to become a real Bible student in this Sword of the Spirit series. We always pick up topics that will get you deeper into the Word of God. So continue with these programs, study the Scriptures, and you will be able to pass on God's Word to other people. And these words can be so encouraging. You never should underestimate how encouraging you can be when you share a word from the Holy Spirit to other people. Now, of course, this means that you're going to have to be prepared to test out these words and these leadings of the Holy Spirit. You can't just say everything that comes into your head. That's not prophecy. That's foolishness. So we've been looking at how you can test the words that you receive to make sure that they really are from God and you can pass them on in a way that is appropriate to those person's needs. Also, I believe we should develop a faith expectancy that God will speak. He will speak to you and He will speak through you. And this, I believe, is the result of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If the Spirit is living in us, and He's a person. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to help you in your study of Scriptures. He's going to help you understand the Word of God. And He's also going to give you the ability to be sensitive in passing on God's words to other people for their encouragement, for their guidance, and for their development in their Christian life. Now, of course, I would also say that there's sometimes a lot of fear that we have to overcome before we do this. You know, one of the things we find about the prophets was that they spoke the Word of God fearlessly. They were bold. Boldness will affect how you speak. Boldness will affect who you speak to. In other words, if you develop a holy boldness and lay aside some of those natural human fears, you will have the courage to speak God's words and to pass God's words on to other people, whether it's the proclaiming of the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether, you will, whether it's about strengthening somebody in their faith or even bringing a prophetic word to help encourage them and to build them up. You will overcome your fear by the Holy Spirit to be bold and clear in your words. Now, I'm not talking about developing arrogance, I'm not talking about being insensitive. I'm talking about learning how to pass God's words on, no matter how easy it is or how difficult it is. We need to overcome our natural fears to learn to pass God's words on. And now we're going to go deeper into the subject to find out how we can be involved in prophetic intercession. Hello and welcome to the Sword of the Spirit teaching series, a school of ministry in the Word and the Spirit. And in this series we've been looking at how to listen to God, which forms the basis of everything we need to know and do in our Christian lives. We need to learn to hear from God in our prayer life, hear from God in the way that we minister, hear from God so that we can obey Him. And so we've been teaching how important it is to open your heart to God to hear His voice. It's part of the prophetic process. And there are some people who are separated for the work of being a prophet. Not every believer, 
but some are called to be prophets. But we are all called to listen to God. How does this process really work? Now, we're coming to the very last session, and I want to stress some practical points on how to listen to God. It begins with your life of prayer. <laughs> There's no way you're going to learn to listen to God unless you learn to pray, because when you come before God in prayer and open your heart to the Lord, you will discover that prayer is a two-way process. God speaks, and you listen. You speak, and God hears you, especially if you speak to Him what He's speaking to you, and take back to Him in prayer the revelation He's given to you in the Holy Spirit. And so as you spend time before God in prayer, then you need to develop this uh, way of listening to Him in, that, in your own quiet times, your own personal times with the Lord. Now, prophetic intercession is a very important part of the prophetic ministry in and of itself. And so it stands to reason that prophets in the Old Testament and in the New Testament are called to speak God's Word as they first heard God's Word in the secret place and in the private place. So we, when we approach this question of prayer, we grasp that it's so important to open your ears and to listen to God. In prayer, the prophets enter the presence of God quietly, patiently listening to God's re revelation. And then also, they speak back that revelation to God in intercessory prayer and then announce that revelation to people. And it's exactly the same for us today. We need to go through this process as we come to listen to God. And so, when we hear the voice of God in the quiet place, as we rest in His presence, it may not come to us like some great mighty hurricane or some voice from heaven like a megaphone or a trumpet sound. That may happen that way, but usually not. Very, very rarely does it happen that way. Mostly it happens with a quiet impression, that still small voice that Elijah had to learn to hear, even though he was a well-established prophet. Now, we also know that in intercession, as we come to focus on God, we hold in our hearts very important principles about God. And we find these in Numbers chapter 14, where Moses comes before God as an intercessor, a prophetic intercessor. We see, first of all, that he is concerned about God's reputation. God's reputation was at stake. The people were destroyed, and the nations, the pagan nations around, would think that if that happened, then God had lost his power, and God didn't have the strength to keep his promise. So he says, Lord, I stand in, you, in the gap right now, and I intercede, and my prophetic passion is for your reputation. Also, Moses was concerned about God's character. He said, Lord, remember, forgive sins. You have told me you are a loving God. You are a pardoning God. You are a God who cares and a God who forgives. Now, Lord, I want you to, to, to fulfill your character. So prophetic people in intercession pray that God's character would be seen and that God's justice would be seen and that God would be seen to fulfill his word. Then they had a concern for God's people, a deep concern for God's people. And so Moses, as the prophetic intercessor, cries out to God for the, for, to have compassion on his people. And so this is the prayer background that we have in prophetic praying and in prophetic listening. So out of this, if we do it consistently and build a habit, we will develop a listening life, a listening lifestyle. And the great communicator, God, the great communicator, will speak to us in our prayer life and will develop that within us, will speak to us out of the word as we are listening to him, developing a listening lifestyle. That's why I suggest you take a note paper and when God speaks to something, a verse of scripture or a thought or an idea, you write it down and you keep a record of that and you keep meditating on that and even memorizing the Bible passages that God has spoken to you specifically and uh, concretely into your life. And then God will give you an increasing awareness of discerning his word through all of the means available to you. You will find if you develop this listening ear, you will see God speak to you through the natural world around you. I already mentioned one of the earlier sessions that God, through his creation, speaks to us, speaks to us in our lives. God created the heavens and the earth, and he's likely to use these things to speak to us. 
For example, Jesus allows the birds of the air and the lilies of the field to speak to us. He says, therefore I say to you, Matthew 6, verses 25 and onwards, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not your life uh, more than clothing? Uh, is not your life more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than them? So what God is saying here is that He can speak to you through the birds of the air. So keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, so that you can begin to discern as the Holy Spirit uses these natural things to speak to you. He will also use events and circumstances of your life. God will speak to you through events. God will speak to you through circumstances. We know that the Bible teaches us that God uses circumstances to discipline us at times. And sometimes adverse circumstances is the disciplining, chastening hand of God at work. God sometimes use, uses these things to humble us and test us. Remember Deuteronomy 8 and verses 2 and onwards, it says, And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandment or not. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor your fathers know, that he might make you to know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And so during this time, God was teaching them, and showing them, and humbling them, and testing them. Also, God will intervene in your life through events and circumstances to show you how much he loves you. Exodus 14, verses 30 to 31. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the, in the Lord and his servant Moses. So through this great action, this event of the Exodus, God revealed his love to these people. And God will do it for you in rescuing you, in touching your life in so many ways. Events and circumstances come to you. And it's God speaking, saying how much he loves you. But that doesn't mean to say that when you have bad circumstances that God is saying, I don't love you anymore. It works the one way, but not the other. And we must remember that God is in control of everything that happens to you, and he lets nothing happen to you that, other than that which he can use for your good and for his glory in your life. And so everything that happens to us happens by the permissive will of God. And uh, so at times, however, we need the interpretation of these events. For example, in Je Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 12 onwards, Jeremiah points to the circumstances in the nation and he actually interprets them for the people prophetically. Who is the wise man who may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken that he may declare it? Why does the land perish and burn up like a wilderness so that no one can pass through? And the Lord said, because they have forsaken my law which I set before them and not obeyed my voice nor walked according to it. So the prophet says, look at the drought in the land. You want to know what that means? That means you've disobeyed God. Now that was a prophetic interpretation of the events. And so we need to listen to the circumstances, listen to the Lord as we watch the circumstances and say, Lord, what does this mean? What is happening here? What are you saying to us? But that's how you learn to listen to the Lord. Another thing you can do is to look at the circumstances and the events around you and say, Lord, how do you feel about that? What do you feel about this dreadful rain, train crash that happened, not just while we were lecturing a, a few days ago, not very far from this building, the most terrible uh, Paddington rail crash that has happened you know, in, 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 in living memory, one of the worst rail accidents with all those so many, so many people dead. How does God feel about that? He, he feels bad about that. Nobody's suggesting that God made it happen. But God can use circumstances and events like this to speak to people. I remember just seeing a, a television report about that, and there was a woman there, she was not a believer, one of the services that came, whether it was fire or whatever it was, accident services, or, or a policewoman or a nurse, I don't know. But she just said this, she said, when I saw the tangled wreckage and saw people 
dead and saw people wounded and in pain and in difficulty, she said, it made me realize just how fragile human life is. Now that went out live upon the news right across the nation and beyond. And we do need reminders of the fragility of human life because this world is living as if human life lasts forever. Eat, drink, be merry. Because, well, it's, you know, it's tomorrow. We put all that off. But we need to know the fragility of human life. And God is speaking to the nation about that. And many other things, he says, through events and circumstances. So we need to learn to listen to what God is saying through events and circumstances. Then we need to look at impressions. God will give us an inner impression. And this is how God speaks to us most commonly. It's very common. There's a nudge on the inside, a nudge, a kind of visual impression or a thought or an idea, something that is coming not from your human thoughts or your human emotions, but something that's coming from the Lord. And so this can happen. There can be a thought dropped into your mind, and you say, well, where's that thought coming from? You don't just accept it as from God, you test it out. And you begin to say, is this the Holy Spirit speaking? And the more you get to recognize his voice, the more quickly you can say, I recognize that. God's in this. God's saying something here. Or a word will come, a single word. And you begin to think about that and say, Lord, what are you saying to me about this word? And then God will give you further understanding and further revelation. Or there may be an idea or a picture or there might be physical sensations. In all of these ways, God can begin to communicate his word to you. And so you need to learn how to wait on him in this way. God can also speak to you through dreams and visions. It's scriptural. It's possible. Some people, it's, it's frequent. Some people say, well, this is the way I always hear from God. He always speaks to me in a dream. But that's not the same with everybody. In fact, that's not the same with many people. God uses many different ways. But if he uses dreams, then that's good. But you again need to have the same discerning to see, is this the, really the voice of the Holy Spirit? I, I dream quite a lot, and most of my dreams are not, uh, they're not prophetic. They're just ordinary dreams. But I'll wake up with a real sensation that that dream that I had last night was a special dream. There was something about it. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be a dream about the Lord Jesus or some spiritual theme. But it's an event, a situation. You're dreaming about a person or you hear something and you think, there's something special about that. That is God speaking. And so you wait on the Lord to clarify the situation. And you say, and the Holy Spirit will show you, yes, that was a prophetic dream. And then you need to know how to go about handling that and what you need to do. So, I want now to begin to take you step by step through the listening process itself. And that in itself is a lesson. Listening is a process. It's not a one-off thing. It's a continual process. We must learn to develop a listening lifestyle. I'm seeking to develop this and have developed it down through the years in which I am constantly listening to God, apart from the times when I'm tuning out and saying, I don't want to hear anymore because I'm just being fleshly. And we do have those fleshly moments that we need to deal with. But God has called us to a spiritual lifestyle and a spiritual mindset. And he calls us to open our spiritual ears and to walk in openness to him, constantly to say, Lord, here I am, speak, for your servant is listening. In meetings when we're gathering together, Together, when we're praying and seeking God, or when we're walking down the street, or at the beginning of the day, Lord, as I go throughout my daily activity this day, don't let me miss you. I want you to speak to me. Show me what you are saying to me. And so during this time, we learn how to develop a listening lifestyle. But as well as that, we need to set aside times when we specifically spend time waiting on God, listening to Him. In fact, when people talk about waiting on God, have you ever asked, asked them, what do, what do they mean, waiting on God? Does it mean waiting at a bus, bus queue? You know, I'm waiting for God. Well, look, God's already here. Now, you don't have to wait for him. You need to wait upon him. What does that mean? First of all, you serve him. You're waiting upon him like a servant would wait upon a master. You, you, you are ministering to him, and you minister to him by offering to him your love, by offering to him your obedience, by making sure you keep your appointments with him. I remember years and years ago when I was learning to listen to God in this way, 
several days went by without me actually setting aside time specifically to listen to God. And I came back to that point and I said, Oh, Lord, I've missed you. And he said, I've missed you too, Colin, which I wasn't really prepared for. And I thought, oh boy, you know. And, and how wonderful it was that God looked forward to that time of intimacy and fellowship, just like Adam and Eve as they walked in the evening, in the cool of the evening, in the garden, and God came and spoke to them. There must be regular, regular meeting times with you, with God. This is your secret place. And you must learn how to abide there. This is your secret place. It's not mine, it's yours, where God calls you to meet with him. And that's a place in the spirit that you must learn to frequent and keep those appointments, that meeting place with God, the secret place. And there in the secret place, as you wait upon God, you minister to him, you serve him, and you worship him, and you, you, you love him, and you bless him. And in that time, you minister to him. It also means that you deal with the issues in your life. You correct your life. You repent. You confess your sins. That's what it means to wait upon God. You say, Lord, I clear out this, all this stuff that is blocking here and now. I deal with these things in my life. Lord, I confess my sin to you, and I turn away from my sin, and I'm going to ask you to help me deal with these things in my life. That is waiting on God, reading his word, letting his word shape you, influence you, praying, interceding, calling upon his name, and then waiting on him for his revelation. What is he wanting to say to you? Lord, what do you want to say to me now? What's your word in this situation? And so, then we come through each of these prophetic phases that we've seen in this course. A summons into the presence of God, an intimate relationship with him, persistent, careful listening, receiving his word through the Spirit, judging and separating the word, the good word of God from the other things that have come, with, uh, come you know, through human means and human interference, then passing on God's word to the appropriate person or the group that God is calling you to speak to, if he is calling you to speak to them. And so we see prophecy involves all these stages. And, and just as there is a prophetic process, for prophecy, so there is a prophetic process in listening to God. And I need to remind you and bring together all the principles we've been looking at in this series to show you how this actually happens. And I've got a checklist here in the manual for you. First of all, this process begins with you listening to God in the intimate context of a personal relationship intimate context of a serving partnership with God and also in spirit-directed worship. So you are listening to God within the context of intimacy. And that brings to an end today's program on prophetic listening. And I pray that God has begun to minister to you and help you understand how you can hear from God for yourself and how you can put what he says into practice. We'll be back next time with more on prophetic listening. God bless you.